Today we are going to talk and learn about M plus 1 problems, how to spot it and how to fix them. The M plus 1 problem occurs when an ORM for example executes too many SQL queries to retrieve data from relations instead of fetching all of the necessary data in a single query. This can lead to performance issues especially when working with large datasets or complex object graphs. Sometimes it's pretty easy to spot M plus 1 problems, but sometimes it can be hard to track it down, especially when working with ORMs that abstract a lot of the things away. For example, we actually have an N plus 1 problem on the transactions table right here. For each transaction, we are loading the category name and then we're also loading the receipt files if there are any. This means that for each transaction row, we could be executing two additional queries. Some M plus 1 problems won't be that obvious to spot. That's why it's better to use some tool like a profiler to analyze the application runtime. We will be using a tool called Clockwork, but some frameworks have other available tools as well. Symfony, for example, has a great profiler. Laravel has debug bar as well as the first party package telescope. There also is xdebug profiler and so on. Clockwork, which is the package that we'll be using, also has support for these frameworks. It also works with SlimPHP framework, Doctrine, or even Vanilla PHP. Clockwork also integrates straight into the browser, giving us insight into the application runtime. It can track things like request data, performance metrics, logs, database queries, and so on. So let's install Clockwork. We need to first Composer require it, so let's copy this. Let's open the terminal, paste that in. And install. Next if we go back to the documentation we can choose the framework that we're working on or choose vanilla if you're working on vanilla PHP. We're using slim so we'll click on that and as you can see we need to basically add the clockwork middleware to the app middleware stack. Now I'm going to set it up a little bit differently than what's stated in here. We will still do this but there is one additional thing that we need to do to make this work properly because we want to add uh, a new data source uh, to track doctrine ORM queries. So let's open container bindings and create a new entry for clockwork so that we can customize some of the things as needed. Also, a quick note here, I did update some of the dependencies behind the scenes. Basically, I ran Composer update, which bumped up some of the versions. So if you're following along, make sure to run Composer install. Because of that update, uh, I had to make another adjustment to our Entity Manager entry here, because creating Entity Manager by calling the static create method was deprecated, and I had to replace it with uh, this basically to properly instantiate the Entity Manager. So let's scroll down and add a new entry for Clockwork. We will instantiate a new Clockwork object here, so we'll do new Clockwork. Let's actually import this. I don't know why it's not uh, giving me an option to import. I'm just going to import it manually for now. So we'll do use clockwork clockwork and then replace it here. Next, we need to set the storage. So we'll do clockwork storage and we'll instantiate a new file storage object here and we'll pass the storage path clockwork as an argument. That way all the data it collects will be stored within that directory. Let's import this class as well and we will also add a Doctrine data source because we're using Doctrine and want to see the queries that are being executed. So we'll do clockwork, add data source and instantiate new Doctrine data source. And this expects Entity Manager as an argument which means that we need to inject the Entity Manager in here and pass it down to this constructor. Now we can add the proper middleware. So let's open the middleware.php and let's go back to the documentation and we'll copy this line right here. Let's go back to code and add it in here. Now we're not going to specify the path here to the storage because the second argument is either the storage path or the clockwork instance. We are already instantiating the clockwork within our container bindings so we can retrieve it from the container and pass that as an argument. If we inspect this we see that if it's instance of clockwork it will just use that otherwise it will create the default clockwork uh, instance using the storage path. That's why I wanted to add this new entry within our container bindings so that we have a little bit more control. So let's go back to here and we'll do container get 
clockwork. And we should only add this middleware for development environments because it collects sensitive data and we don't want this to run in production. So we're going to add a simple condition here. So we'll do if app environment is development and we'll get the environment from the config. So we'll do config get app environment only then add this middleware to the stack. Let's import this class. We'll import the environment and we're good to go. The next step that we need to do is we need to install the browser extension called Clockwork. So if you open the Chrome Web Store, for example, you can search for Clockwork and then add it to your browser. I'm going to add it to my Brave browser here and then open the transactions page, open the dev tools. And as you can see, there is a new tab here called Clockwork. Switch into it and you should see this nice UI showing us what's happening in our app, how long the request took, how many queries it executed, and so on. So if we pay attention to this endpoint, which is to load the transactions, we see that it's executing some 21 events. If we click on that, we see a bunch of queries. Now this may not be that easy to go through because it's condensed, so we can uncheck that. And we see the beginning of the queries listed this way. This might be a bit easier to understand what's going on. As you can see, we see queries for each transaction. We have the select from categories, select from receipts, and this repeats multiple times. We can also toggle the details here. So if we click on that, we see the full queries. So if we click on condense again, we see that it's basically executing 21 queries. Out of that 21, these are okay. So we have one, two, three, four and then rest are basically not okay. We shouldn't be executing that many queries. This is what M plus one basically looks like because for every transaction row, we are executing a query to get the category name and then retrieve the receipt ID and the name from the receipt table. Now, in some cases, it may not execute uh, the category query for every transaction row if the categories are the same because Doctrine handles that behind the scenes. For example, in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine categories, but the entertainment is repeated twice. So it's not going to execute nine different queries. It will actually execute eight queries because this repeats. Actually, it will execute seven queries because the groceries repeat as well. So if we open the dev tools again, we can actually see how many categories query it executes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and there should be one more. And there we go, seven. So yeah, it's executing seven categories queries and then bunch of receipt queries. To fix this, we need to basically eager load the relationships. In this case, category and receipts. In simple terms, eager loading allows us to load all the data that we need in a single query rather than issuing multiple queries to fetch the related data. Think of it as joins, basically. There are a couple of ways that we can add eager loading in here. One is at the entity level. We can specify a fetch param on the category and receipt relationships and set it to eager. But that is not ideal in some cases because it will basically eager load every single time and you may not want to do that. Another way is to do it at the query level. So only eager loaded from the queries that have the M plus one problem and need that data. So let's open the transaction controller and within the load method, this is where we have this issue right here. We're getting the category name and then we are getting the receipts. We are fetching the transactions from the get paginated transactions method. So let's inspect this. And we do have a left join to the category, but we are not selecting the category information. So the fix to eager load the categories is actually pretty simple. We'll just add select in here and we'll say we select everything from the transactions as well as from the categories. Now if we go back to the page, let's open the dev tools, switch to clockwork. We see that uh, in here it executed 21 queries. Let's refresh and now it executed only 14 queries. So we're getting better. If we expand it, we see that for categories we're no longer running any queries, but we're running the receipts queries. To fix this, we can add another left join here to receipts. So we'll do T receipts and alias it to R and then select it in here as well. Let's go back to the browser. Let's uh, refresh the page. 
And as you can see, we're no longer running additional queries for receipts either. If we condense this, we brought our number of queries from 21 to just three. And as you can imagine, if we were loading a lot more data on this table, like maybe we had set it to 100 and we had 100 transactions in 100 different categories, it would be running hundreds of queries. So eager loading category and receipts tremendously reduces the number of queries it needs to run. All right, so the other side of that is depending on what sort of data you are storing in your tables and the size of your entities, doing eager loads this way can also cause some performance issues because essentially we're hydrating or loading data from all of these tables, even though we only need the category name and the receipt ID and the name. One way to fix that is to select only the properties that you need here, but then it will no longer hydrate and return as objects, it will return as an array. So you would have to make some adjustments in your code that expect the object, including the transformer in our transaction controller. Another way is to use custom details and hydrate those. I don't think we need to worry about that at this stage. If we face some performance issues related to this, then we can think of ways to optimize it. But in general, basically keep in mind that sometimes eager loading can also cause performance problem and executing a couple more additional queries might be better than eager loading everything. So it is really important to inspect and profile your application and see where things can be improved and optimized. All right, so let's see what else we can optimize. Let's uh, do an import and see what queries get executed. So I'm going to open the DevTools again. Let's clear this out. Let's do an import of 1000 transactions. I've prepared this uh, file behind the scenes. So I'm going to click import and it's taking a while as you can see here. And the execution has finished. And as you can see, it took over 42 seconds to perform this import and if I click on it it's taking a while to load because it has executed a lot of queries so it executed 4001 events let's remove the details and let's uh, uncheck the condense so we can actually see uh, the queries that it's executing so we're doing users categories then it starts the transaction this is the database transaction it inserts into the transactions and then commits then it selects the categories again, starts the transaction, inserts into the transactions table, commit. And then it's doing that over and over again, 1000 times. So there are a couple of issues here. The first issue is this selects here. The select categories is being executed multiple times. The other issue is the database transactions here. So it seems to start the database transaction and commit it for each transaction that we create in database so it's running every single insert statement within a database transaction and that's not good that's affecting the performance let's fix the select query problem first this uh, select from categories first so let's go back to the code let's open the transaction importer controller and in here we're looping through every row in the file and we're doing a lookup of the category by name so this is the place where it's running that select query one way we can fix this is by loading all the categories before the loop and then we can do a simple array lookup by the name. Since categories is a relatively smaller table, we can store them in memory and shouldn't really have any problems with it. So we can do something like categories equals this category service and call some method like get all keyed by name. And keyed by name means that we need to uh, return an array where the keys are the category names so that we can do something like this in here. So instead of running a query here, we'll do categories, look up the category by the category name. So like this, and then if it's not set, then we'll set it to null. So let's go ahead and implement this method in here. This should return an array. Then we'll fetch all the categories from the entity manager. So we'll do get repository category and then find all. Then we also need a category map uh, variable, which basically will contain the categories uh, keyed by the name. So we'll do for each categories as category. And then we'll add the category ID to the category map by the name. So we'll do category get name equals category get ID. Now let's also apply a string to lower function on this so that it finds matches regardless of the casing. So we'll do a string to lower and then finally return 
the category map. Actually, I don't think this will work because if we return only the ID, then our transaction data will fail because this expects a category entity as an argument, not an integer. If there are two categories with the same name for whatever reason, we should not care about that. Uh, we may add some handling in the category page so that we don't allow more than one category with the same name or give the user warning that they have two categories with the same name. So let's go back to the browser. Let's try the import now and see how many queries it executes this time. So before it was at 4001 events and let's see what it's going to be now. It's still taking long because again it's running through that uh, database transactions which we'll fix later but let's see if the select queries at least have been fixed. Alright so it has finished the uh, execution and it is a bit faster than previously about two seconds faster seems like. Let's inspect, condense, Let's show details and as you can see it has executed now 3002 events instead of 4001. So we are on the right track. Obviously we still have an issue here. As you can see it's executing insert statements within database transactions. This is the problem with us calling the flash method for every persist which is an anti-pattern. We are going to tackle that and fix it in the next video. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.